The MTIS by PSI Tire Inflation System requires simple maintenance to keep it operating properly. First, connect an air pressure source capable of supplying at least 120 PSI to the trailer glad hand, and also connect an electrical source to the front of the trailer. Begin by checking the light operation by opening the system maintenance valve. This will simulate a leak and the light should come on. If it does come on, close the maintenance valve and proceed to the next step. If the light does not come on, we will need to investigate why. While the system maintenance valve is still open, check the leads on the flow switch to make sure they have power. If both leads of the control box of the flow switch have power, perform the same test on the leads behind the light to determine if the light is burned out. Replace a bad light as needed. Please note that the power for the light comes off the ABS wire on the trailer. Next, we need to check the system output pressure. Turn the system off. Detach the output line from the control box and install a high quality liquid filled gauge to the outlet port on the control box. Turn the system back on. Read the output pressure. It should read 3 PSI above the target pressure. As an example, if you are trying to achieve 100 PSI as a cold tire pressure setting in your tires, the gauge should read 103 PSI. If the output pressure is correct, then remove the gauge and reattach the output line to the outlet port on the control box. Turn the on-off valve on the control box back to the on position. If the box needs adjustment, then refer to the video or presentation on control box adjustment. Now you want to check the wheel and components. Start off by disconnecting the hoses from the through tee at the knurled fitting. If the fitting is too tight, you can carefully loosen it with pliers. Please note that it is only necessary to hand tighten the knurled fittings when reinstalling the hoses. After the hoses are disconnected, make sure the valve core is clean and free of anything that may impair its function. Briefly depress the valve core and ensure air will flow freely from the tire. If air doesn't flow freely from the tire, replace the hose. If the valve core is damaged, do not replace it with an ordinary valve core. This is a special valve core and available as a replacement part. Also, while the hoses are removed from the through tee, use a quarter inch piece of tubing to depress the check valve at the through tee and ensure air is flowing freely from the fitting. Now inspect the tire. Check the tire pressures. This can be done with a calibrated tire gauge at the end of each hose. If the tire pressure is correct, do nothing. If the tire pressure is too high, release air from the tire by pressing the valve core in the hose. Ensure that the pressure in the tire is 5 to 10 PSI below the target cold pressure setting. If the tire pressure is too low, inspect the tire and the hose for leaks. After inspecting the wheel in, we want to check for leaks. Spray a soap and water solution on the vent area of the hub cap. If there are bubbles present in the hub relief vent, we need to find the source of the leak. Turn off the system and open the system maintenance valve to release the air from the system. Remove the through tee from the hubcap by turning it counterclockwise. Remove the hubcap and protect the bearings. Reinstall the through tee into the stator and hold the through tee as straight as possible while someone opens the system on off valve to allow the system to pressurize. Now spray the soap and water solution on the stator seal, stator threads, the outer diameter of the press plug, and the through tee seal. Also spray the thermal screw if your trailer is equipped with the thermal alert option. Use caution not to allow the solution to come into contact with the wheel bearings. Dry all components after the leak is identified. You should only have to replace the part that is leaking. Please note if you're replacing the through tee, make sure the part you order has the same length stem. If the stator needs to be replaced, reinstall a new one. When replacing a new stator, be careful not to break off the white filter on the end. If this white filter is broken at any point of inspection, the stator needs to be replaced. When reinstalling, hand tighten the stator into the press plug and use a 5 8 inch socket to tighten approximately 2.5 additional turns or 20 to 25 foot pounds to obtain an airtight seal. Once the appropriate parts are replaced, reinstall the hubcap according to the manufacturer specifications. Reinstall the through tee and torque to 45 inch pounds. Up to 55 inch-pounds of torque is permissible to align with the valve stems. Refill the hub with oil and reinstall the hoses to the through tee. If your trailer is equipped with Thermalert, 
and at any time you hear an audible sound coming from the Wheeland area, an inspection of the thermal plug is required. Turn the system on-off ball valve to the off position and open the system maintenance valve. To inspect the thermal plug, remove the hoses from the through tee, remove the through tee from the hubcap, and remove the hubcap. This will expose the thermal plug and the press plug at the 12 o'clock position. If a thermal event has occurred, you will see a complete passage through the body of the thermal plug. If you find that the thermal plug is activated, PSI recommends a thorough inspection of the wheel end to be conducted in accordance with your company's maintenance procedures. If you must replace the thermal plug, this is an available part and the torque value of the new plug is 25 to 30 inch pounds. Reassemble all components in reverse order of removal. After all repairs have been made, verify the system on-off valve is in the on position and the system maintenance valve is closed. If you are finding excessive oil on your wheel end, check the oil level. The level should be between the add and the full marks on the hubcap. Overfilling will cause the oil to escape through the hub vents. You should also check for defects in the hubcap and for leaking components in the wheel end that may be pushing the oil through the hub vents. Follow the steps discussed earlier to identify the leak. This concludes the recommended maintenance procedure of the MTIS system by PSI. If you have any further questions, please contact your Meritor Dry Force representative or the Meritor OnTrack Customer Call Center.